one way I think you can sufficiently gauge just how much trouble a politician is in is if even people like Marjorie Taylor Greene go out of their way to not just distance themselves from you, but to actually delete any evidence that she ever met or knew you. <laughs> that is the exact situation that Florida Congressman Matt Gates is finding himself in now. And after learning about his scandal involving alleged sex trafficking and a possible extortion plot, more details have been slowly but surely emerging. And to make matters worse, we're now finding out what actually triggered this investigation in the first place. As Sarah K. Burris of Raw Story explains, CBS News revealed Wednesday that Representative Matt Gates took a trip to the Bahamas in late 2018 or early 2019 that triggered the sex trafficking investigation, sources revealed. According to the report, Gates was on that trip with a marijuana entrepreneur and hand surgeon named Jason Perizzolo, who allegedly paid for the travel expenses, accommodations, and female escorts. The Justice Department is investigating to determine if the escorts were illegally trafficked across state or international lines for sex with Gates or merely as escorts that do not provide anything other than companionship. Hmm, I wonder. Now, we also learned that before Donald Trump left office, Matt Gates reportedly had a private conversation with him and he asked for a preemptive blanket pardon, according to the New York Times. He said no. <laughs> <laughs> Since this story broke, Donald Trump has come out and publicly denounced the story, alleging that it's fake news. And, you know, since Donald Trump is usually a really truthful, honest actor, I think we can take him at his word that this totally was never a conversation that occurred. Except it's totally probably true, and I don't believe it for a second. Uh, I, I think that Matt Gates is... Uh, He's not letting on to how much trouble he knew that he was in. And really one thing that's telling about the situation is the fact that all of his usual allies aren't really speaking up on his defense. Usually when there's a Republican politician in trouble, the Republicans propaganda arm Fox News mobilizes and comes to his defense. But they haven't really said too much about this. I mean, they've covered it mostly in the first 24 hours when the story broke. But even Matt Gates' bestie at Fox News, Sean Hannity, has been nowhere to be found on this particular subject. And that really tells you a lot that uh, his closest allies, they know that this ship is sinking and they want to get off before it takes them down with it. So as Eric Hanunoki and Matt Gertz of Media Matters explains, Representative Matt Gates owes his political rise to Fox News. Politicians gain power in the modern GOP by grabbing and holding the attention of the base, and the easiest way to do that is through its most trusted media outlet. The Florida backbencher understands this structure and gained a national profile in his first two terms by fervently supporting Donald Trump and denouncing the former president's foes in near constant appearances on the right-wing network. He also won the favor of Trump himself, who watches Fox regularly and appreciated the congressman's zeal. It seems, however, that Fox has now abandoned Gates at his moment of greatest need. Gates has been engulfed in scandal following the New York Times' March 30th report that he has been under federal investigation for alleged sex trafficking. The congressman has spent the last week denying that he had sex with a minor or paid women of legal age for sex, declining to comment on reports that he showed nude photos of women he claimed to have had sex with to other members on the House floor and drawing lackluster defenses from colleagues speaking on the record and descriptions of cartoonishly scandalous behavior anonymously. But Fox devoted a mere 45 minutes to the Gates saga through Tuesday and nearly three quarters of that coverage came in the first 24 hours with the network providing sparse coverage of subsequent revelations. Perhaps the most notable absence from Gates' defense is primetime host Sean Hannity even as Gates responded to the allegations by spinning the sort of convoluted tale of deep state conspiracy and right-wing victimhood that seems tailor-made for Hannity's program, the Fox star has seemingly left him for dead. Gates is a Hannity fixture. Since August of 2017, he made 127 appearances on the program, roughly 41% of the 310 interviews he gave the network overall, including a disastrous turn on Tucker Carlson tonight to respond to the Initial Times report. According to Media Matters database of weekday programming, Gates is the 11th most frequent Hannity
Kennedy guest over that period and ranks second to Senator Lindsey Graham among guests who have not served as paid Fox contributors. Yet the Fox star has not mentioned the embattled congressman's travails, not on his primetime TV show, not on his nationally syndicated radio show, not on his website, and not on Twitter. So obviously, Sean Hannity's silence here is deafening. Imagine if um, we were in the middle of an election cycle and as someone who supported Bernie Sanders and defended him, there was this gigantic scandal that popped up and I had nothing to say about it. That would be really, really conspicuous, right? My silence would be a little bit weird if you're a usual viewer. So the same thing is true here. When you have someone who is an ally to you, who goes on your program all the time, for you to be silent in a time like this, that says a lot. Now, perhaps Sean Hannity's silence has something to do with the fact that Matt Gates implicated Tucker Carlson, and maybe Sean Hannity is a little bit too close to this. He doesn't want to fly any closer to the sun than he already has. I don't know. I'm very obviously just speculating, but the fact that Sean Hannity, of all people, is not touching this, that says a lot. That tells you that Matt Gates, he's going down. This is, uh, this is one of the many red flags. Uh, this, is, this is him, I think, realizing, Sean Hannity realizing that the writing is on the wall and it's best not to get too involved in this. Don't defend him if you think it might come back to bite you in the ass. And Republicans, they've, they've always defended shitty people. How many Republicans defended Roy Moore, who was an alleged pedophile? But in this instance, for whatever reason, they are conspicuously silent for one of their best friends, Matt Gates, And that says a lot. That tells you everything you need to know, that uh, there's more than they're letting on, and they know that this is a very, very serious scandal. But I mean, I think that we all know that Matt Gates should do the right thing. He should resign, and I'm going to take some time to fire off a tweet at him, telling him how I feel. I'm sorry, but when even Marjorie Taylor Greene distances herself from you, you know you're in real trouble. So do the right thing and resign, Matt Gates. you absolute perverted Cretan. Oh, misspelled Cretan. Uh, I hope that Matt Gates gets the message. Um, anyways... This story is incredibly interesting, and uh, I am anxiously awaiting more and more details because this might be one of the biggest political scandals of the year. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. 